quantum computing stocks saw a huge increase in stock price in the past year. We can see ticker RGTI was up over 1,500% in the past year alone. But what if I told you quantum computing is still multiple years away? You might respond by saying, Jose, what do you know about quantum computing? You have a master's degree in electrical engineering, which has nothing to do with quantum. Well, luckily, in today's episode, we are going to take a closer look at different interviews from different big tech companies, companies like Google, companies like NVIDIA, discussing with top level quantum engineers, what are some of the headwinds impacting the overall industry? So let's take a closer look. But before we go anywhere, make sure to hit the thumbs up, make sure to hit the subscribe button, check out the pinned comment for my daily semiconductor newsletter, whatthechiphappened.com. So let's get started. So quick disclaimer, before we go into this video, I want to say I have no intentions of buying or shorting any quantum stocks, right? The reason I want to do this is you guys know I come from the semiconductor market. And what really gets me excited about the semiconductor market is learning about emerging technologies and what comes next, right? And quantum computing definitely fits that industry of what's going to be the next big thing in forms of technology, because eventually that also means that's going to be a big thing for the consumer space and for an investment point of view. So I'm trying to learn more and more about this industry. So obviously for me, I'm going to say in forms of quantum computing market, from what I'm listening from these experts, it shows that the market might be a little bit ahead of itself. Now, this doesn't mean that in the next month or so, quantum computing stocks are going to go down. No, we historically have seen that there are events where sometimes stock prices are ahead of the technology, but eventually something catches up. There could be also the scenario where six months from now, we can see that maybe quantum computing stocks go down. It's always interesting to see where the directions go. So personally, I am not bullish in quantum computing stocks, but at the same time, I wouldn't short them at these levels because the market can continue to go up. Now, before we go any further, let me know in the comments below, are you planning on buying quantum or selling your quantum stocks? Again, if you've had these stocks just in the past month alone, you've done amazing, right? We can see RTTI is up over 328%. And congratulations. So I want to say a lot of excitement has also come out with recently in December, we saw Google announce their Willow chip, right? And this is like, hey, look, Google is in the quantum market. So this must mean that we are almost there with quantum computing. But actually during that release date and Google released two videos that I think every investor in the quantum computing should watch. And we're going to look at clips from here. We're going to see quantum's next leap. 10 septillion years beyond classical computer, and also meet Willow, our state-of-the-art quantum chip. We're also going to look at kind of viewpoints from NVIDIA as developing a workforce for quantum computing revolution. Three great videos that kind of explain both the bullish and bearish thesis of quantum computing. So let's take a closer look at the first point. So the first video I want to take a closer look at is this quantum next leap where we have three scientists, two from Google and one from an academia source. And here in this video, I want to show Google talking about their milestones. They mentioned that for quantum computing to really become an important part in the consumer space, first, they have to pass these six milestones. Currently, they're on milestone three, and they believe for them to reach milestone six, it's still at least half a decade away. And this is from an optimistic engineer. Published a roadmap how to get to what we think will be a quantum computer that can confidently deliver commercial value. And we packed it to be a computer with a thousand well-protected logical qubits, which probably means about a million physical qubits. And we published a roadmap how to get there. It has six milestones and we are now approaching the third milestone, so we are about halfway through our roadmap. And we are not much delayed relative to what we say the timeline would be. So I've said this before, my subtitle here is Chief Optimist, but I think um, just tracking our progress date is that we should see early commercial applications. So I would think it's more half a decade or a few years rather than multiple decades. One must be optimistic. That's how great things happen. 
All right, another thing that in this video we did here is quantum computing right now currently has a lot of errors due to the high noisy level of the overall kind of quantum computing technology. The great thing with quantum computers is they do have an insane speed, which helps eliminate kind of that error problem because they can just keep running the things over and over again at a fast space until they get the right answer. But at the end of the day, any forms of error is bad, and that needs to improve over time. Google hardware has improved a lot in recent years, as we've been hearing, but it still makes lots of mistakes. So they have to run it many times in order to extract a usable signal that can be compared with that classical simulation. They, in fact, run it millions of times, but they can do that in just a few minutes, which is still a very short time compared to the resources you would need to do the same simulation on a classical machine. Now we're going to look at the second Google video, and this is the one where they discuss more about their Mate Willow platform. We just talked a little bit about errors, and one of the reasons errors are happening is quantum computings tend to be very, very noisy. Another issue with the noisy levels of quantum computing is as you start to connect more qubits, more quantum chips together, the error rate increases. Let me explain. A challenge in superconducting qubits is that not all of them are created equal. Some are outliers with uncharacteristically high errors. Now, NVIDIA also shares some thoughts on bottlenecks. And remember, I want to say I do come from the engineering field. So there might be some companies that are making some products right now that might be helping the development of quantum computing. But when looking at investments, when looking at multi-billion dollar companies, I think at those levels, you really have to start to see how it impacts the consumer space. And the first thing NVIDIA really talks about is where are we in quantum computing? Many reports might say that, hey, look, quantum computers are already useful in the industry. But if we take a closer look at what NVIDIA's engineer said, your thoughts might change. Now, if you look in popular media, you'll see headlines like this. And you'd be forgiven for thinking that we do already have quantum computers. But unfortunately, the truth is a little more nuanced. And the devices that we have today, although very impressive demonstrations, are not yet useful quantum computers. And the reason for this is that today's quantum computers are just too noisy. And although there's a very clear path to dealing with that noise, there are a lot of challenges along the way. Now, one of the final issues that we've heard from top engineers right now is the workforce. And that workforce right now is very, very small. Obviously, there are companies like the ones we mentioned today in the quantum computing that tend to have a workforce that are working on this. But for quantum computing to be big, we can hear from the NVIDIA uh, engineer that is still in early stages. And this is something that we're going to need heavy investments in the quantum market by either the private sector or even governments in general as well. To build useful quantum computers, we need a very well-trained yet diverse workforce. We need physicists, engineers, computer scientists, developers, mathematicians, and in fact scientists of all kinds who are well trained in the specific nuances of quantum computing. And the importance of workforce development is becoming increasingly recognized. Over $55 billion has been spent worldwide on initiatives to build useful quantum computers. And most of those focus very much on workforce development. All right, so those are all the sources that I have here about some of the headwinds impacting quantum computing. Again, my overall purpose of this is not to be bearish in the quantum computing market, but to understand more of where we're at in this industry. And like I mentioned, I am not a quantum computing engineer, so that's why I decided to do the next best thing and kind of see where quantum engineers in these big tech companies are really seeing this space. Now, what I think I might do later on, if you guys want, let me know in the comments below. And if you're still watching the video, maybe I look at one individual quantum computing company and see, read through their earnings transcript and try to understand what they see in this space. Um, again, most of these companies are probably sub $10 billion market cap. They have seen huge influx in stock prices. Normally, that's not something that sits right in my stomach when investing but this is more me gathering information so I can see what's next in this huge innovative space. So take care, have a good day, and see you all next time.